Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2011 POA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question reads, the owner of Jay-Z Variety Store begins his business on May 1st, 2010. He recorded all transactions in a general journal. Okay, the following are the records for the first month of business. So we're going to pull up those records, Jay-Z Variety Store. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 sets of transaction. And they tell us at the bottom here that at the end of the month, Jay-Z records a closing stock of $5,000. Now let's take a look and see what the question is requiring us to do. Okay, so part A says, write the narratives required to complete the entries on May 1st, 8th, and 25th with three marks. Now, you know me, I don't always just like to give you exactly what you need. So I'm not going to just give you the narratives for these three transactions. We are going to go through all the transactions and make a narrative for each of them. Let's take a look. Okay, so in the first transaction, we are seeing that bank premises and motor vans are being debited and capital is being credited. So that looks like the owner is either starting business or introducing additional assets into business, right? So I'm going to go with starting business. So as you can see on this side, it says to record the start of business with the owner introducing assets via capital. Now, of course, these, these narrations are not hard and fast or set in stone. There are many, many different articulations or versions of these you can put. If you want to put your version of any of them in the comment section below, I'll take a look and let you know what I think. And of course, you can help other people by expanding their repertoire of articulation. All right, let's take a look at the next transaction. So we have equipment being debited and Equipo, Equipco Company Limited being credited. Okay, so that's a debit to equipment. Now, equipment is an asset. When you debit an asset, it's increasing. And Equipco Company Limited, why would you credit Equipco? A credit implies a liability. Well, this type of transaction means we are buying an asset, but we are not paying for it. We are actually buying it on credit because we are now owing Equipco Company, the vendor or the supplier, money in respect of that same asset that we have just purchased on credit. So the narration will read to record the credit purchase of equipment valued at 40000 from Equipo, Equipco Limited. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot the O. There's another part of the question with Equipo, but it should say Equipco Limited. Okay, next transaction. So we have a debit to electricity, 2400, a credit to bank of 2400. Now, electricity is an expense, and you debit an expense when you pay it, and bank is an asset, and when you credit an asset, you are decreasing it. So why would bank decrease? Well, we are paying electricity. That's what it looks like. Okay, so on the fifth, it says to record the payment of electricity expense, $2,400 by check. Nice. Let's go to the transaction on the eighth. This is an interesting one. This is one of the ones they specifically asked for. So pay careful attention here. So we have a debit to Sam's used cars account, 12,000, a debit to bank of 12,000, and we also have a credit to motor van of 24. Now what's going on here? Now motor van is an asset. If we are crediting motor van, that means that motor van is decreasing. And at the same time, our bank account is increasing by 12,000. So it looks here, looks like, what it looks like to me is that we are selling this asset. We are selling the motor van valued at 24000 and we receive the check worth $12,000 in part payment, and we are selling it to Sam's used cars. And the thing is, Sam isn't paying us the whole twenty-four. Sam is paying us half. So what that means is that Sam currently owes us the remaining half. So this is an interesting item. We are selling our motor van worth 24000 accepting 12000 by check, and the remaining balance is still, on, we could say it's on account or still owed to us by Sam's used cars. So let's take a look. What did I have? To record the sale of a motor van worth 24000 to Sam's used cars, receiving 12000 by check and leaving the remaining 12000 sorry, on account. That phrase on account means it was sold on credit. Okay. Right, so again, that's one that they specifically asked for. So please be sure to make a note of that. And of course, if you have a shorter way of saying it, by all means, leave it in the comment section below so that myself and others can have a look at it and see how else we could have stated this particular nar narrative. Okay, the transaction on the 14th. So we debit in motor van now and we are crediting bank. Motor van is an asset. If you debit an asset, it's increasing. So it looks like we're buying a motor van and we could corroborate that because bank is also an asset, but it's being credited. 
which we saw above means bank is decreasing, which means we are paying money out of the bank. So we're using money from the bank via a check to buy a motor van worth 30000 So the narration I have is to record the purchase of a motor van worth 30000 by check. See, simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at the transaction on the 15th. So we have a debit to purchases account for 20000 and a credit to bevy distributors account for the same 20000 so when we debit purchases, that means that we are purchasing goods or stock or inventory or merchandise, whatever you like to call it. Why are we crediting Bevy? Well, we're crediting Bevy because we are buying these goods on credit. And when you buy on credit, you didn't pay for them. So you end up owing the supplier or the seller money, which means the supplier or the seller is a creditor, which is a liability. And you credit liabilities to record the increase in the liability. So you debit the expense and you credit the liability. So let's see. So it says to record the credit purchase of stock with 20,000 from Bevy distributors. All right, let's take a look at the item on the 20th. So we're debiting fixtures account 20,000 and crediting Wood Products Limited 20,000. So when we debit fixtures as an asset, that's going up. So it looks like we're buying fixtures. And again, we're not crediting bank or cash. We're crediting the person or the entity, sorry, that we bought it from, which means that we're buying the fixtures on credit. So we still owe money to the entity or the company we bought it from. Hence, that's a liability and that's why we are crediting that entity to, to enter them in the books as a creditor, a liability. So let's take a look at the narrative to record the credit purchase of fixtures with 20,000 from Wood Products Limited. Okay, on the 25th now, we're debiting wages, which is an expense, and crediting bank. That's a simple one. Wages is an expense and when you debit an expense, that means you're paying it. So you are paying wages worth 4,400 with a check. Right? And that's what you're going to see here, to record the payment of 4400 of wages expense via check. Next, on the 26th, we're seeing Bevy's distributors is being debited now and returns outwards is being credited. So that one is kind of self-explanatory. We are clearly returning goods to Bevy's distributors. So we're debiting Bevy because remember, Bevy was a creditor, somebody we owed money to. That's a liability. And if you return goods to your creditor, that means you no longer have to pay for those goods, which means your liability is coming down. And to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. And returns outwards is credited. So we're going to see that there. To record the return of 1200 worth of stock to Bevy distributors, or Bevy's distributors, sorry. Okay, and the last transaction, bank debited 25000 sales credited 25000 Bank is an asset. When you debit an asset, the amount of money in it is increasing. So your asset is increasing, so it means that we are getting money. Where's the money coming from? Well, that's why we are crediting sales. The money is coming from making a sale. So clearly this is a cash sale and the person paid in check or cash sales and all, all money was banked immediately or something like that. Okay, what did I put? To record 25,000 worth of cash sales with the money being received by check. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's the end of part A. So please make a note of the items they wanted you to um, definitely provide the narrations for. But I hope that the analysis and going through all of the transactions will help for you, right? Leave a, leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B has two parts. Identify three journals or daybooks other than the general journal, which Jay-Z Variety Store can use, and explain the use of each journal or daybook identified in B part one above, six marks. Okay, so you know me, I'm not just going to give you three, I'm going to give you all, except of course the general journal. So if you go across here or down here, right, journals, books of original entry other than the general journal and their uses. So the first one is this. Now, these are in no particular order and you don't have to list them in any particular order either. The sales journal. This is used to record the credit sale of inventory, stock or goods only. The only asset or the only sale you will record in the sales journal is of stock. No other asset is recorded inside of there. And the same thing goes to the next item, which is the purchases journal. This is used to record the credit purchase of inventory or stock only. So no motor vehicles, no fixtures, nothing else. When we purchase it, will go inside of the purchases journal. It's only used to record credit purchases of stock. Next, the returns inwards journal, self-explanatory, used to record the return of inventory by customers to the business. Returns in from customers. Item four, the opposite one, the returns outwards journal used to record the return of inventory to suppliers when we send goods back out. And the last one I have is the cash book. And this one is relatively easy. It's used to record all cash and bank transactions. 
Okay, lovely. Let's take a look at part C. All right, so something interesting here. So from the information in the general journal, draw up the trading and profit and loss account, the income statement, for JZ Variety Store for the month of May 2010, seven marks. So this is going to be interesting because normally we are presented with a list of balances or a trial balance from which to prepare the income statement. Here, we aren't given that. We are given some journal entries. So let's pull that up. Okay, so this might be a little small for you, you all to see. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably zoom in on each item as it becomes relevant. Okay, now let's take a look at how I formatted the solution. So usual head up, name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. Now the first item is going to be sales. So if we zoom in on that sales item, there's only one sales item in the whole set of general journal entries. That was down here, right? The debit to bank and credit to sales for 25,000. So we're going to put in 25,000 across here. Right now, less cost of goods. So we had no returns in, so we have to worry about that. Now, we had no opening stock, so we don't have to worry about that. Were there any purchases? Yes, I'm seeing purchases 20,000 from Bevy Distributors Limited. All right, now there was also a returns outwards to back to Bevy of 1200. So we're going to put that in and subtract that from the 20,000 to give us the net purchases. Now, we have no opening stock, but opening stock plus net purchases is cost of goods available for sale. The closing stock was given to us below in a little sentence here. Jay-Z records a closing stock of $5,000. So we're going to take closing stock away from the cost of goods available. That's going to give us the cost of goods sold of $13,008, which of course is subtracted from the sales figure of $25,000 on top there. So at this point, if you guys still are a little weak with the trading account and all these different pieces, I'm going to put a card in my trading account video up there. So most people say when they look at it, they, they understand a little better how to do the trading account. Now it's one of my earlier videos, so the quality is not that good. So if you do watch it, I, I hope you understand, but just understand it was one of my very early videos. Anyhow, now we had no other revenue, so let's just get to less expenses. Okay, what expenses did we have here? So I'm seeing electricity. I'm also seeing wages. So are those the only two? Let's take a look. So we had electricity. And wages yes we did and then we're going to add those two together get 6800 and we're going to subtract that from the gross profit of 11 to to give us a net profit of 4400 okay so that's the end of the income statement let's take a look at the next part of the question all right so this last part is asking us to list the creditors and debtors of jay-z variety store as at may 31st 2010 okay let's pull back up that trial balance real quick okay so there were a few things that happened here that resulted in us owing money to other entities. On the 2nd of May, we bought the equipment on credit from Equip Co Company Limited. Uh, we didn't pay them back at all, so we still owe money to Equip Co. Now, we also purchased on credit from Bevy Distributors Limited, although, sorry, Bevy Distributors, no limited. We did, we did return some of those goods, but we didn't pay back the rest of money we owed, so we still owe Bevy some money. And right below there, we also bought these fixtures on credit from Wood Products Limited. Right, so we didn't pay back Wood Products any amount at all, so we still have money owing to, to Wood Products Limited. Right, and there's only one entity, one issue here that gave us a debtor. That was Sam's used car. Remember, Sam, we sold Sam our car, a motor van, sorry, on credit. Well, partially on credit. We, Sam paid half and promised to pay half later, so Sam is a debtor. Okay, so if we go across to the creditors, like I said, were Equip Co Company Limited. Then we had Bevy Distributors and finally Wood Products Limited. And for the debtors, we had just um, Sam's used cars. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the Jan 2011 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some useful PUA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.